Okay, welcome to the build of Aviation Toys, the Speedster. Now, before we start the actual kit, let me just talk through a couple of things you are going to need for this kit. Um, sharp knife. Um, you can use a hobby knife if you want to. Um, I find these very useful, and that's these little emery boards for doing um, the sanding. Um, or a little little sanding block would be useful. Um, most of the glue primarily we're going to be using is just plain super glue. Um, we will also be using just on holding the motor in is some Yoohoo pour glue, polystyrene glue, and something else that's going to be useful is either a little set square like so, so we can get the edges and all the frame that are nice and square or if you haven't got anything like that a small set square would be useful or even if you have a small uh, ruler that's got a nice square edge to it so we're not going to need a lot of things the only other thing you will need are some pins now you can either use uh, modeling pins or uh, sewing pins the very small sewing pins are just as good as well so what we want to do is we want to get all the kit out and identify all the parts. So first thing we want to do is to very very gently just slide everything out because remember this is balsa wood, it's quite fragile. So we just slide that out like so. Now for the actual build you can download the uh, instructions from the website which I'm going to put a link to. And you can so that's our charging box and if we just open this up here there's a little link to the instructions but I will go over that in a moment so we'll put those somewhere safe and then we've got some sheets of balsa and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this balsa out so that you can then identify all your parts now these little bits that have dropped out don't worry they're going to be missing anyway but they're just where they've been laser cut and they've superb superbly fallen out there's a little accessory pack there uh, we've got some balsa now what I'm going to do I'll just freeze frame that. So that's the bolster that you're going to need in the kit. Now in the accessory pack there's a wire. You'll have a propeller and you've got a motor which is connected to a small circuit board and this chap here, the big black blister here that's a, uh, a capacitor and we'll talk about that as we go through the construction so the best thing to do is at the moment let's just put these all to one side safely so we don't lose them So, instructions you can download from the website. I'm going to put a link, and there's various things you can do with the um, instructions. You can either print them off, like I've done, or you can actually just download it and read it off your phone or an iPad or um, off a laptop. So, the first thing we're going to need to cut out is this fuse part of the fuse large and it's got the little writing that says top and also we're going to need to cut out this engine former now good tip I've got one of these small cutting boards and what you want to do is you can just see where don't be tempted to push this out if you can actually see there I've just got there's a couple of little places where they deliberately stop the cutting with the laser and just have a good look round, there's another spot there, look you see and then what you'll find 
is that this will now very gently we're just going to lift that out like so put that back and then we want the engine mount here that says top so we're going to get that out if you find it's stuck at all just run round all the laser cutting just to make sure that the laser has gone all the way through you see there we go that's now going to pop out and what we want to do is we just want to clean up so where the laser has stopped um, where we've got these little bits here all we want to do is just give them a gentle rub don't go mad just a gentle rub there's another one there just support the bolsa and just rub that like so just to get rid of any rough edges that may be on the fuselage now these will pop out they're designed to pop out so don't worry now I've got one there um, so we're just going to cut that one out as well you won't need to um, sand these little pieces in here so we've got our fuselage side and our engine bearer so you'll notice that this frame has uh, the little engine mount has got top written on it and we've also got top written on here like so so the idea is that this then just slides into here like so if you meet any resistance at all in this little joint it's perfectly all right just to gently pop that in there like that and just give it a very gentle little sand but the laser cutting is very good so remember top to top and the reason for that is is that the motor mount has an offset to it and the offset has been cut into the formers and you can see how the motor is actually offset that little the hole it makes is slightly offset that's actually supposed to be there so what we want to do is when we're happy that that's slid down in place I'm just going to check with the square edge of my ruler that it's all square and then do that there like that's fine and then what we're going to do is I'm just going to run a little bit of glue a little bit of super glue just along this joint just a small piece and just a small piece along here little top tip here if you're using super glue and you put a little bit too much on if you get a paper tissue like so and then if you just wick that up then what you can do is you can very quickly keep it moving because you don't want it sticking to the paper but you can actually just run down that just to make sure you've got rid of any excess of glue but that is the engine mount now fitted the need is that we're going to use need our power power unit so that's the motor and the capacitor just be very careful handling it with the wires so we're going to need that and we're also going to need to cut all these formers so that's one two three and four we're going to need to cut all of those out so I've cut these all out don't chuck this away um, this is always useful for spare parts in case we have a little bit of a mishap so keep that safe and again all I'm going to do is very gently I'm going to pick up all the formers and I'm just going to make sure where there's a little bit of laser cutting I'm just going to clean up any areas that may be standing proud if we do this now this is going to make when we may actually come around to forming the fuse large a lot lot easier so we just want to make sure that we give these all a good little clean notice how I'm supporting the frame with my fingers and then I'll just very very gently not pushing too hard 
that's all we need to do is to make sure that these are cleaned up if we leave these rough what will happen is you'll find your fuselage sides won't fit together as well now just be very careful because some of these are very thin and very fragile and remember that on their own they will be fragile but when it's all glued together as part of the fuselage it will provide a very very strong structure now this is very weak and what you really do need to do there because I do need to just sand it off there is support that very gently with my finger and I'm just giving that another clean there we go okay the next step is we've got our motor and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently slide this all the way to the end now can you notice how I've got the wires either side of this former like so so you want to have your wires either side of that former now I'm going to use I'm not going to use super glue on here I'm going to use this um, Yoohoo expanded um, glue okay so we've got our motor glued in with the wires either side of this former now all the formers that we're going to use one through till four you'll notice that one side has got an elongated section and one side hasn't on this left hand side that we're working on we're going to be using all the ones that have got the tag so for this instance we're going to be using former one and the idea is you've got those two little channels there and the idea is that's to allow the wires to feed through so former one is going to drop just in here now if you have any trouble fitting this former don't force it it's very you can always stop and sand it mine has gone in beautifully I'm gonna pop that in there make sure the wires are through then when you're happy that, that fits like so then we can just add a little bit of super glue again just making sure that it's actually square although the laser cutting is excellent and the laser cutting is going to do most so we're just going to add a little bit of glue to this former just here and just here but don't overdo the glue remember too much glue is too much weight particularly in a little aircraft like this so that's the next step let's glue this left-handed side a former one with a little notch on it in here so we've successfully put our uh, former number one in the next thing is the capacitor this the black barrel that's going to drop down inside here and remember we want to leave enough room for it to fit into this slot because that's where the recharging port is so that's how that goes like so and again I am just going to put some uh, Yoohoo glue on there now when that's glued in place the next thing we need is number the former number two and again as I said earlier it's the former number two that's got the little uh, extension because the idea is that is going to drop into there like so so former number two is going to drop into there Just being very careful like so now what we can do is we can actually these two wires we can tidy up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these wires back when I'm happy with them then the wires can then be actually glued up, well the former is glued with the wires trapped underneath and that keeps it nice and neat okay so we have our uh... now you can if you want you can actually put this former two in first and then slide the capacitor in I just found it easier to do it like this because I found it easier to neaten up the wires um, so there it is that's former one former two and I've just fed the wires through that little gap there so that has made neatened up the wires so the next thing we want is former three which is going to fit into here like so which we which will then glue again making sure that it's actually sitting square 
and exactly the same thing and you'll note again I'm still using the ones that have all got the tongues so the idea is that these will fit into here like so if you have noticed any resistance like this one is just a little bit resistant or just stop and very very gently just support it and I'm just giving that the various gentle little bit of um, sanding and then that will pop in there absolutely superbly and I shall make sure that they are sitting square like so so I'm going to pop that ruler in there make sure they're square and then I will be gluing along this joint here do not glue this side at the moment because we need to be able to fit the former the other side so only do any gluing this side at the moment okay so we've done the, all of the left side of the fuselage so that's formers one two three and four now we're going to repeat the process former one former two former three former four making sure they're all nice and square and slowly work our way down the fuselage okay so we've finished all our formers now the next thing to do is to do the undercarriage now the first thing is by former two is a very small hole and what I've done is I've actually just worked the wire in to the hole so that it fits so it's clear and I've just given that a little bit of a spin look and that's just gone through quite nicely so this is how we're going to do the undercarriage I've drawn myself out a little plan so what I've done is I have marked the wire exactly in half you can see where I've marked that there and I've drawn myself out I've taken the measurements and I've drawn myself out a little plan so we're going to have to bend it in the middle but we've got to bend it so that it will fit around this fuse around this fuselage bolt now I'm using this bit of scrap that we got remember I said keep hold of it so the idea is I am just going to bend that um, in the middle where I've marked like so I'm going to bend either side and I'm just going to try and offer that up against there that's perfect so I'm just going to open it back out again because I've obviously gone not, we're going to go fold that all the way down and I'm just going to pinch that together and we want to pinch it together by about the first 500 like so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark 500 sorry <laughs> I'm going to mark, mark five millimeters down and then bend out marked five millimeters down and then I will bend these out to match the angle that I've made and that's going to fit on there like that it's slightly too narrow at the moment but I'm not going to panic over that I'm just going to open that one out just a little bit there we go and when I've got that in the centre like so there you go what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark when I'm happy I'm just going to mark 
this is going to come out here. Now I'm going to leave these long to start off with deliberately until I've got the wheels in place. So again, I'm going to use a different pair of pliers. I'm going to pop that on there like so. There we go, there's one. Remembering to try and keep them at the same angles and straight. And you notice when I'm bending the wire, the piece that I'm bending, I'm keeping gripped in the pliers. And then I'm just doing that like so. And then looking across to see that these are about the same angle. And then we're going to pop that on there like so. And that one just wants a little bit more of a bend. Don't over bend this. Because you will break it. It will what's called work harden. And will break. Now you can see where that's perfect. But this one is just bending up slightly. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tweak down. There you go, and that will be perfect. So what we're going to do now is that is now going to get fed through the fuselage. This can be very fiddly apparently. Just take your time. There you go, like so. Now, what we're going to do is I am going to get this vertical and I'm going to quickly going to glue this in place and then I shall hold that with a little bit of super glue and then we can either use a little bit of the Yoohoo glue or another good idea is actually to um, put some super glue around it and then actually just shake a little bit of baking powder around it just a very small amount and that will help um, fix that in place okay and there is the undercarriage is finished and you can just see I put a little bit of super glue just to hold it in place then I put a little bit more super glue on there and I just very very gently just sprinkled some baking powder on there and then when it went off I just blew off the excess dust and that is now rock hard and uh, hopefully that's going to take many a landing so undercarriage done let's move on okay so we've successfully put the uh, undercarriage on and that's working very well and appears to be very solid with my uh, super glue and baking powder technique so I'm going to put that away somewhere safe now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to sheet um, the actual fuselage. The first two pieces you're going to need are the bottom sheets and they're identifiable because they've got this little notch in the bottom there um, which you can see. So they're the first two. Now in adding the sheets they're going to need a slight angle sign, uh, sanding into them so that we can actually uh, not have any gaps. So I'm just going to get the first two out and I'm going to have a look at those. Now the other suggestion is, is you might be able to use a little bit of super glue um, just to tack it in place. But my advice is do not use super glue for this piece. I'm actually going to use some of this super fatic um, glue. Um, it's nice and runny. And the reason for that is, is that if you use super glue you're going to find it very very difficult to sand. Because what you'll find is, is that the super glue doesn't sand as well as the balsa. 
and then you'll find you'll, you'll get a bit of a mismatch you'll end up removing more balsa than you will do glue so we're just going to clean these little up where they've got the little notches on them and then I'm just going to offer these up in the correct places just to see what sort of angle I'm going to need to cut on each one of these to get them to fit and when I've come up with a plan for that I'll show you. Okay so I have just sanded the edges and I'll tell you what I did do with mine if I can show you on this one. I held these edges when I'd identified them on the right on the edge of the bench and I went over at about with that angle and I slowly worked my way down supporting either side. Now I did actually get the side members out as well just to check the angle. So what I've done with the first two, they're not finished yet. But what I have done is I've got them, I'm happily, they're happily aligned, but you notice they're not glued at the moment. All I've done is I have just tacked them in place with the tiniest little smidge internally with a little bit of um, Sino. And now I'm going to use my alphatic resin and I'm going to glue these all up and they are going to fit along there beautifully, like so. So I'm going to do this next step and then we'll go on to the um, doing the sides and then the tops. Okay, so the two side, the bottom sides have gone on, the bottom surface has gone on very nice. Um, I did use a couple of little pins with the alphatic resin. When I got it all in place, I just put some extra glue along the fillets there. That's gone very nice. Now, the sides, the fuselage sides, you have to remember is you've got this laser printed line on here. That indicates it's going on the outside. So make sure that any of your angles are done on the inside. Don't be doing the angles on the outside as you'll have the angles around the wrong way. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm fitting this onto here like so. Now, something to remember that when, you come, when you've done the one side, when we fit the second side, make sure that this side um, is exactly the same distance across between these two slots because it then means that your wing is going to be square across. Okay, so we have the last two sheets, the top sheets. Now, one of them has a notch inside, like so, this one here. And that's going to go on the right-hand side because that's going to allow for you to plug in the uh, capacitor. Um, you might have to do some trimming just to get it to fit. But also remember, again, to get your curves on the inside. And then, so I'm going to start with the left hand side and then work my way round to the uh, right hand side. Okay, so we've finished all the sheeting. Now we have to very, very carefully sand. The only tip I would say with the sanding is remember not to sand away this laser line for the guidance for your wing. Uh, just take your time, go very, very slowly and uh, that's come out uh, really nice um, so the next step is we're going to put the uh, guides on for the wings okay so I removed the uh, two wing templates remembering to get there is a left and a right and I just held mine in place and I've just applied a little bit of glue on the under surface here not the top surface because the wing is going to sit on the top and you don't want any glue on the top surface so as I say I held mine in place and then dropped that in so we're going to put that to one side the next thing we're going to do are the wheels okay so wheel construction We've got some um, outer wheels and an inner wheel. So the idea is you've got the small outer wheel. Um, I've got this laser cut in mine. I'm not quite sure why that's like that. But anyway, so that's got, I'm going to pop that on the end of a screwdriver. I'm then going to add a little bit of glue to the larger main wheel. I'm going to drop that down there like so. 
and then I'm going to add some glue to the same one that sits on the other side and that's how it should look. So smaller ones on the outside, the bigger ones. So when that's dried, then we're going to add the wheel bearings. Okay, so uh, I've done the wheels and I just gave mine a little bit of a lick just around the edges to give it a more aerodynamic shape. <laughs> now, let me tell you, I spent about 15 minutes looking around the workshop trying to find the bearings. And obviously this must be a bit of a Dutch joke from my mate uh, Vincent. The sellotape to the back. <laughs> Anyway, I found them. So the idea is we're going to get these bearings out. Now I've got this lovely little needle here. And I'm... Yeah, be warned, they are very small. And I am just going to feed that on there like so. And then I'm going to gently push fit them in. They might need a little bit of easing. There you go, I'm going to push that fit in and then when I've done the other side I'm just going to push this through like so, pop the other side down and then when I'm happy I'm just going to add just the tiniest little bit of PVA glue but make sure that the hole is nice and clear but it means I get to get the bearings set up nice and square on this, uh, actually it's a hat pin but um, that's, that'll be just perfect when I glue those on like so. So that's the next step. Okay, so I've done the wheels very successfully. That's worked out very nice. Now, before I go on to adding the wings, I want to paint my fuselage. I've not decided which colour. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use some sanding sealer first. So I'm going to give it a very light coat of sanding sealer. Be careful not to get it down near the electronics. And then I might give it a very, very gentle rub with some very, very fine um, emery paper and then give it a second coat. But I'm going to do that now uh, before I uh, paint it. Okay, while well, my fuselage is drying from having the couple of coats of the sanding sealer, I've now got the tail plane out and the fin little thing to note this little notch here is supposed to be here that's where it butts up against the back of the fuselage so don't get removing that because that's an important part for locating all you need to gently do is to slide the two together like so uh, if for any reason it's not going together then stop and make give it a quick sand um, there is no recommendation for putting any aerodynamic surfaces on these. One thing I did note that when you put it on, just make sure that the fronts, you see how that is just down slightly, you want the leading edges matching, it can just twist slightly. So all I'm going to do is I've got my set square like so, I'm going to make sure it's square and then if when I'm happy it's square like so, I'm just going to add some, uh, just a little trickle of uh, super glue. Okay, adding the, I've got the left wing. So the idea is, is that uh, this little notch fits into here like so. And then the idea is we're going to glue it down. Now the dihedral is found by actually butting the wing up to the fuselage like so and if you do that then what you'll do is you'll automatically get the dihedral so I am going to just tack the tiniest little bit of sino here with the wing in place I'm going to add some um, PVA glue on the top surface along here but once I've got it in place I am just going to tack the tiniest little bit of super glue just in there just to hold it in place and then see if it will hold the dihedral if not I might actually just jack it up um, just to get it in the right angle but let's see how we go there you go that went better than I expected uh, 
yeah, literally pushed them on, got them flat, and uh, yeah, looks good. Um, I did uh, confess to, I ran a, once I got it in place, I ran a small bead of cyano underneath, and that appears to have worked really nice. Uh, so I'm just going to leave those to properly set now. Okay, adding the tail. I just put the tiniest little bit of cyano um, about here. Just a small dab. I sat the tail plane in place. And then when I was happy it was all square in relationship to the wings. Um, I then just ran a small fillet of um, cyano along there. And just used this pin just to run along here just to make sure I get a good joint. Now I might just leave that to dry and then I might actually add another fillet just to give it a bit more strength. But that's come out so we're, that's come out spot on. There we go. On tail skid added. Now all we've got to do is just sort out the um, nose cone and she's ready to go. So oh, one of the very last stages is um, to do the spinner. Now I'm going to have a go as recommended in the instructions. So I'm going to cut these three out, glue the smaller ones either side of the main one, glue it to the front of the prop, and then I'm going to have a go at um, running the motor um, and then sanding it to shape. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay. Well, I've successfully managed to put the uh, spinner on, but uh, that is a proper mission for an old man's eyes. I ended up using some loops out of my clinic to be able to do it. So, let's talk about the power pod. Basically, the idea is you want fresh batteries, and you want three uh, AA batteries. And they pop in there like so, and it just slides back and engages like so. Now, the idea is, obviously you want to do it from the back, you've got to wind your hand from the propeller, it pops in there like so, let me just show you, that pops in there like so, and that's now charging. So I'm just going to give it a quick go, oh. there we go, the red light's come on, it's now charging, can you see the red light, it's glowing, it's come on, it's charging, and when I take the charger out, there we go, and it's going to slowly run down. And let's see how we get on with the uh, spinner. not to hit the propeller. Um, do you know what? I think it needs just a little bit more but I think that might have worked. There she goes, she's finished. One Aviation Toys Speedster. Um, just a little tip on the wheels, I used a little bit of heat shrink uh, and then shrunk it down, then put another bit of heat shrink on the other side, shrunk that down and just whipped a little bit of super glue in and there she is. Oh, I put a little bit of silver striping on because we all know that aeroplanes that are red and got silver stripes go better. So. Let's get to the field and see how she goes, the speedster. <laughs> 